Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's the glorious 8th, a regular feature of everything in bloom on this day. So no buds, no spikes, <laughs> no, none of that sort of stuff, just blooms. That's all I do in this video. It's a regular monthly thing that I try and do on the 8th every month. Um, and this month it's going to be a bit different because it will be filmed in bits. Um, it's a watering day for me today and even though I know I won't get everything done this time of year being a day late with watering really doesn't matter but as you can see today we have sunshine yesterday we had rain yesterday should have been my watering day but I was out doing stuff <laughs> and as as it was just a miserable dull day nothing much was going to happen in here you know plants this time of year in the UK slow right down unless they get a, a bit of warmth and a bit of sunshine when they might have a little grow but not not to any great extent day lengths are short now you know so uh, that's the way it is anyway this is everything in bloom so uh I'll do it in bits simply because as I'm going round I can get at things without having to stop watering which is basically what I've got to do today so um, I'm going to start with things I can get at easily <laughs> it's as simple as that you know stuff that's a little bit more awkward I'll do as I get to it and I'm watering and things like that but um, quite honestly for the time of year I'm quite pleased I've actually got a fair bit in bloom um, and you have to bear in mind, although this is a What's in Bloom video, um, it's my channel. If I want to have a chat about some plants, I will. <laughs> See? <laughs> anyway, um, there are some things that are predominantly late winter, early spring bloomers, and they're, they're on an annual cycle. You know, so there won't be many of those around today, will there? Not uh, as we go into November anyway. But there are some things that don't really have an annual cycle. There's a lot of the Oncidium Alliance that their, their cycle is more like nine or ten months. You know, as the bulbs come up to maturity, they will produce their spikes at whatever time of year. But the one thing I have noticed over the years is that those type of plants that don't really have a strict season often don't get quite such good spikes or blooms in the UK winter. You know, the day lengths are so much shorter, you're knocking a lot of the vigour out of the plants. You know, they're just not getting the daylight hours. And I can't go into lights and all stuff like that. I'm not doing lights, basically. Where the hell would I put them? <laughs> I've got far too many shelves to think about adding lights in here. So they, they have to put up with what they get. They've been doing it for long enough now, you know, and a lot of the older ones have been around a while. They know the ropes, you know, they know the rules. <laughs> they accommodate accordingly. But I'll get going with what I can get at because it's a main watering day today, so and I've got quite a bit to do, you know, so uh, let's crack on. I suppose the easiest way is to start down one side and get at the ones I can get at, and I'll get at the others later. Um, but I will be doing it in bits and pieces today, as I go round watering. We'll see how we go. Um, I'll start with this in the sunshine. Now I don't know whether this camera can pick this up but the white petals and sepals on this, this is Dendrobium rhodostictum, they sparkle if they get light on them. It's absolutely stunning. Now these are strange blooms, the um, uh, Latoria types, because they often hang down, you know, so they don't show themselves off as well as they perhaps could. And the one thing I've noticed is that this particular spike, there's not as much purple. Now that could be a light related thing that I was just discussing. These blooms have only just opened. I only had one last time and it had quite a bit of purple on it. Now these haven't got so much purple. Now that could be a, re a light related thing. You know, these are blooming in much lower light conditions. Even though they're sat in the nice sunshine this morning, it's filtered sun, it's, it's, it's through the shade netting, it's not direct sun. Um, this other Latoria type, this is Roy Tokanaga White Knight, um, is coming to the end. You can see some of the blooms are just starting to fade now. Some of the others are still looking reasonably good, but these blooms are coming to the end. 
And it's really sad because, I mean, they've only been around such a short time. You know, they've only been around nearly three months, that's all. If you want to blooms that last a nice long time with a variety of colours and what I consider to be good strong plants, have a go at the Latoria type dendrobiums. They are so worthwhile. These um, little rhododendrons have just opened. They'll still be here next year. Seriously. They last for ages. Lovely little splash of white sparkly bits and some purple. And it's the same with these. Yeah, they're just starting to go now. I'll um, put a pop up with the date that those opened, those spikes. This is value for money. The Latoria type dendrobiums are not difficult. They can sometimes be difficult to get hold of. Um, you know, they're not your common ones. They're not your dendrobium phalaenopsis types. You know, uh, they're not your um, nobly type hybrids. You know, these are a little more unusual. They take a bit of searching out, but well worth the trouble. When they bloom, the blooms are out for ages. And these are continuous growers. You know, these don't do the winter rest thing. They need to get a bit drier in the winter in the UK, not for any other reason than the fact that the day lengths are so short, so they're not growing as vigorously. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's my two Latoria types that are out. I love these, I really do. And I mean, look, come on, that's lovely blooms, lovely little splash of purple, not so intense this time round, lower light levels and all that. What else we got? Come on, searching desperately. <laughs> um, that's a nobly that's playing silly buggers at the moment. <laughs> that should be blooming late winter, early spring. It's decided to do it now. You know, I'm not going to take all the buds off. They don't get replaced. On a nobly type, you know, you get blooms on the nodes. Well, you only get them once. You know, <laughs> you could sort of think, oh, you're not supposed to blow, bloom in the autumn, so I'll take the spikes off. Well, you won't get any more. Where they come, they come. And then that node on that cane is done. It's not going to sprout again. That's not how they work. Not even the hybrids. But this one, this time, has got a lot more pink on it than before. This is 98% um, uh, certain spring dreamer pollen. Um, simply because I can't see anything else that's close. So I'm happy for that to bloom at the wrong time of year when it does that. Very happy, in fact. You know. OK, I won't get so many blooms late winter, early spring. But the gaps that didn't get used this time round will get used then. And then I'll get loads more big, fat, nice canes like that one the next time round. Right, I've only got one Tolumnia out at the moment. It's been out for some time and it's doing nicely, thank you very much. Yeah, it's an absolute stunner. It's a colour changer. When it opens, it's, it's, it's a bright orange with a deep yellow, a lovely red lovely deep maroon red on it but then it fades to more autumny type colors the red doesn't fade but the orange intensity around the edge of the lip fades as it goes but this spike has done really well these were the original blooms down here it put a branch out and it's got three blooms on there it's now branched again it's got some more blooms to come so this spike's just going to go on the only advice I can give you with telumnias is make sure they dry out in between watering. They need a fast wet dry cycle. It's in their nature. You keep these soggy, you'll end up losing your roots. Yeah. Um, temperature wise, doesn't matter that much really. They don't like getting cold. You know, they do come from the sort of Caribbean basin area. I don't think it gets that cold around there. Yeah, <laughs> their day lengths don't change that much either. That is a bit of a downside growing telumnias in the UK is the short days through the winter. But short days or not, it's putting up another spike. So there will be a succession of blooms. There's still some more buds to come here. Yeah, on this little branch. These haven't gone. This one's only just opened. There's one round there just opening as well. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'll have a succession of blooms on that. That's not a bad little plant, that one. I haven't long had that one. Um, what else have we got round here before I move on? This has now been in bloom some time, and I'm pretty sure the last spike I had on this did not stay open this long. 
I'm actually quite impressed this time round. Um, this is Melissa Bryony, or Bryony, however you want to say it. And do you know what? I just got a memory lapse. Milton Idiom. <laughs> so it's, it's all very well saying what the actual variety is. I'd forgotten what type of flipping plant it was. <laughs> but I mean, these are stunning blooms. They've got gorgeous depth of colour on them. They're a nice size. And for my plants, that's one of the better spikes I've got, had, still got. <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. It's early in the day. Right, so where are we now then? Um, <clears throat> done those, done those, done those. Can't not do that, can we? You just cannot not do stunning Cattleya type blooms like that. Now that's Cattleya Angel Heart. Um, the blooms are, are in fact colour changers. Um, the petals and sepals, when this opened, did not have that nice magenta colour. They were a much paler colour, bordering on cream with just the magenta edges and tips. And since they've been open, they've coloured up a lot better, which is flipping good. Because <laughs> that's the colour I was expecting, not the colour they opened. When they opened, I was a trifle disappointed. But uh, the disappointment's gone now. Um, my only Cattleya type out in bloom at the moment. I do have buds and things coming on, but this is a blooms video, not a buds video. So uh, Cattleya Angel Heart, absolute beauty. Love it. Right, where are we now? I'm getting at the ones I can get at quickly and then I'll do the others as I'm watering. Um, this is a poor show. Um, this is Dendrobium harveyanum. Now this plant went downhill badly, and I mean badly. I was getting worried it was actually going to keel over, but it's recovered. Um, all those growths up the top are new growth, so it's pushing on again. It objected to something, I never found out what but it's now recovering quite nicely. Boy, is that a big kiki. I have to deal with that. Yeah, there's a really nice big kiki there with its own little root system. Yay, new plant. Um, anyway, these are pretty blooms, lovely sort of feathery, and you know, they're, they're just pretty blooms. That's a poor spike, a very poor spike. Two blooms, not good. But the plant is in a state of recovery. It is recovering, I'm pleased with its progress although this time of year it is going to slow down a bit but next year that should come back into its own again lovely little yellow flowers frilly frilly lip frilly petals lovely deep yellow smashing blooms um, and hopefully the plant will look an awful lot better next year when it starts to grow again we'll see how we go with that one uh, what else have i got as i come around here oh, you can't not do that one can you so, hang on, let's turn the fogger off. Click. <laughs> Fog me blooms. Um, this is um, Peter Comp, and this is the last of its three spikes that have been out absolutely ages. Um, quite honestly, this for me is a lot of why I grow orchids. It's just the shape, the colours, and with a bit of sunlight behind them this morning. It, it's just a beauty. It's absolutely stunning. Now this is the last of three spikes, so it's on its way out now. This will be the last spike for a while. It has got some new growths coming on, so there will be more blooms later. I haven't got a clue when, but later. <laughs> I won't worry about when, I'll, I'll be patient, sort of. Um, my only twinkle that's out at the moment is Twinkle Cinnamon. Um, this has a lot of spikes, all at different stages, which is good, because they're not really long-lasting blooms. And, I mean, some of the spikes are in their embryo stage. Some are starting to swell. They do take quite a while to go from the appearance of the spike to actually getting the blooms. And there's quite slow progress on the spikes. That's how they are. You can't, can't push them. But when they open, they may be tiny, but they're a lovely splash of colour and a heavenly fragrance, which is why I grow them, quite honestly. They're nice, compact oncidium types, you know, they don't grow huge, so they don't take up loads of flipping space. And their blooms are tiny, but they're colourful. I mean, you can get literally right through from whites, yellows, um, 
pinks into reds and this this is cinnamon um, so this is a bronzy sort of color with some splashes of yellow lovely delicate little blooms I'm not doing a tripod and doing a close-up <laughs> I've got things to do today it's a real watering day today um, my only vanda that's out at the moment I don't know what this camera is going to do because I'm pointing it at the sun um, I'll do the pop-up with a name because I can never remember it. It's about eight foot long. <laughs> but this is a smashing spike. It has an unusual feature at the moment because it had two blooms here came out of the same bud. Now that is very unusual. Normally with Vanders you get alternating buds with a single flower. That's pushed out too this time. But again, the difference in the seasons. This, this particular Vanda had some um, very nice purplish flushes on it last time it bloomed. I can't remember whether this is the second or third time this year. It's at least the second anyway. Whereas this time the blooms are very white without those purple tinges. They're just there subtly, but certainly not like they were last time. And again, it's probably just the lower light levels this time round. Um, Pop up with names I can't pull off the top of my head because the name on this one's about eight foot long, so uh, I'll do pop up pop ups for that one. It's my only vander out at the moment, but um, there's one up the back just about to open, so there will be another one for next time round. Last ages this particular one. They're a very very um, good plant. It grows well, blooms frequently, and has lots of blooms on the spike. I can't really fault that. Right, what else have we got that I can get at quickly? Nothing, so I'll do the rest in um, bits and bobs as I go round. Now this is another one. I don't know whether the camera can actually capture this. Um, this is Bulbophyllum Elizabeth Ann um, variety Buckleberry. Um, and this is a good bloom for me. That's, that's not bad at all. Um, but it sparkles. Again, I don't know whether the... Um, camera captures it but it actually sparkles and that is a much better bloom than I had last time that's for sure and given that the bulb that it's bloomed on is hotly followed by several others that are in the stage of maturity I should get some more blooms on this in the not too distant future they don't last an absolute age that's for sure but while they're out you know they are pretty stunning blooms I don't know whether this camera can catch the sparkles on them, but it's absolutely sparkling at the moment. It's, uh, yeah, now that's a good bloom. I'm well pleased with that. <coughs> um, and with any luck, I can see at least another two bulbs maturing. I hope I'm going to get a succession. Um, a lot of that will depend on the lower light levels in the winter that might actually inhibit those bulbs blooming as they mature. But um, we'll see how that goes. I'll have that one while it's going, I think is the expression. Lovely blooms, lovely long double tails on each, each bloom. Effectively, that isn't, it isn't really two tails. It's fused. If you follow the line back up from the two tails, you can see the join and then it opens out. So it's in fact fused down through there with the long tails, yeah? And the little, I don't know whether I can do this, but the, uh... oh, there's one. They wobble. <laughs> it's a trick to catch insects. As the insects land on them, they haven't got a sure footing and they wobble and basically the pollen can be deposited on the back of the insect. It's a little trick. The orchids get up to some strange things, don't they? Uh, yeah, nice bloom on that one this time. Nice and evenly spaced. The last one I had had a gap. <laughs> it had some round here, and then a gap, and then some round there. Uh, a couple of, couple of buds just didn't develop, I think. But that, that's a good blooming on that one. I'm well pleased. Well, this Miltoniopsis is lasting well, <laughs> to say the least. Um, blooms have been out some time now. Um, it's a nice bloom, but it's not what I thought it was going to be. It was bought as a pale yellow bloom, but it's a colour changer. It, the the, the what, what is now white changed from pale yellow through to a sort of straw colour and then to pure white. 
So it's got three stages during its blooming. Um, so to see the yellow again, I've got to wait for another spike, which will be a while. No signs of new growth yet. And still in its original media, which I don't like. But I don't want to disturb it now. I'd rather wait till I can see some signs of new growths and some new roots. Um, fragile in as much as they don't like disturbance unless it's at the right time. They can be stressed by so many things, Miltoniopsis, and the idea is to minimise the stress to no more than one thing at a time, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Don't, don't stress the whole flipping plant, you know. Don't repot it when there's no signs of new roots and new growths and you've got high temperatures. You know, that's two different types of stress at the same time. So uh, the idea with these, when it comes to repotting them, is that that is their only stress and they're in a stage of growth. You do see some new roots active yeah, at that point, and you minimise the stress on them. They go over so easily, Miltoniopsis. Once you get a really big plant going out of these, which you can never buy, you can only buy young plants like this basically, in their, normally in their very first spike, which is what this is, um, they take a while to build up strength into a good plant. And if you let the media start getting old and starting to break down, you'll lose the root system. And then if you've got a big plant and you lose the root system, you're highly likely to lose the whole plant because it won't be able to stand it. They're very, very, they're not fragile, but they're susceptible to so many different problems. And if you get more than one problem at once, they, get, they start going down quite quickly. If you can get them right, they're smashing plants. They're beautiful blooms. I mean, that's not a perfect bloom because it's got like a slight twist. Oh, that's better. Now it is. <laughs> but, I mean, they're lovely blooms. They're worth the trouble. Well, they are for me, anyway. You grow, grow in a really hot, steamy climate, then these are not going to do well. They're cool growers, basically. They don't like heat. They don't like bright light. But, you know, if you've got a place where it stays a bit cooler and... Um, you know, you can keep them sort of slightly shaded in the brightest parts of the day and not stress them. They're very rewarding. Miltoniopsis are smashing, you know, but um, they are, I, I would imagine that's my fussiest type of orchid. I've got a few lying around. There's only this one in bloom at the moment, but um, they are fussy. You know, they, they stress very easily, um, providing you know what stresses them and don't load them with multiple stresses at once. Try and keep it to an absolute minimum. None at all is good. <laughs> but, you know, at some point you're going to need to repot it. That's a form of stress. You've disturbed the roots, you know, splitting them, you just disturb them, getting the light wrong, getting the heat wrong. So many things that can stress these out. But if you can get them right, they are very, very worthwhile. Very worthwhile. Strictly speaking, this isn't really part of this normal video, but as there aren't a huge number left to do, I'll, I'll go on. Miltoniopsis really are Miltonias by another name. <clears throat> the reason they were given a separate name, because effectively they are basically the same, is that they come from a different place. Yeah? So they are Miltoniopsis, all be it by name, but they come from a much cooler area. Yeah, they don't come from the same place as your Miltonias. So they've got a different habitat, a different way of growing. But genetically, if you get down into it, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. But they were given another name because of their, literally their habitat is so different. The Miltonias are pretty tolerant plants you know they'll take heat they'll take quite bright light you put these in bright light they won't be happy i know it is at the moment i'm just filming it <laughs> it's in the sunshine at the moment and it shouldn't be but they work differently they're a cool grower they don't like heat yeah they don't like intense light they like shady environments in their natural environment a lot of the miltoniopsis there aren't that many species there's really not that many it's only a small little set and they tend to come from the montane forests, you know, so they're shrouded in mist a lot of the time. And they don't like intense light. They don't like temperatures. And quite honestly, they don't like being disturbed. <laughs> yeah, the time to lose one of these is repotting it at the wrong time. 
Sometimes some people would say, repotting them at all and you're going to lose them. But at some point you'll have to, you know, you just have to try and time it as best you possibly can. Take each thing in turn that stresses this plant and try to never get more than one of those items at any one time. Don't repot your Miltoniopsis in the middle of the summer. It's already stressed, they don't like the heat, yeah? So disturbing the roots at that point is not a good idea. You see what I mean? Try and get the stress to an absolute minimum and then they should recover. I mean, at some point you have to repot them. That's stress, you know. If it gets too warm in your environment, that's stress. If it's too bright, that's stress. If it gets too cold, that's stress. So try and minimise the stress you put these under and they are incredibly rewarding plants, quite honestly, but they are a little bit fussy. I would say Miltoniopsis are my fussiest orchids. The slightest little thing sets them off on a downward spiral. So you've just got to try and minimise everything you do to a, no more than one at a time. <laughs> Don't repot them in the middle of the summer when it's hot. You know, you've just applied two stresses. One it already had because they don't like the heat and now you've disturbed the roots as well. Try and keep it to one at a time. Preferably none. But, you know, at some point you're going to have to repot the flipping thing. So, uh, and that is a form of stress. There's no doubt about that. Get the timing right, you minimise it. Get the timing wrong, you lose your roots. Yeah? And sometimes the timing is nothing more than the time of year. Try not to disturb them when it's too hot or too cold. Although, quite honestly, they probably would mind it a lot less in the cold than they do in the heat. Yeah, it's heat they do not like. <coughs> anyway, that's my only one in bloom at the moment. Right, these are the um, Restrepias that have actually got blooms on at the moment. Um, quite honestly, they bloom virtually all the time. They come and go. Um, but there are times when a plant may just have no blooms, it's pushing some buds up and some have just finished. So, you know, they do get what I call blind spells every now and again with no actual blooms on. But um, this is the one I've had the longest. Now, these really need a tripod to do them justice, but I haven't got time today. Tough. <laughs> but that's um, Falkenbergi. I've had that plant a long time. That objected to being repotted, and the way they object is they don't form their leaves properly. Yeah? Because they're just not getting hydrated well enough. Well, it's recovering now, and the new leaves are starting to push out clean. So it's, it's recovered. But um, I've had this one quite a long time now, and that was the problem. I was reluctant to repot it, left it in its pot too long, it lost a few roots. So it's taken a while to recover, but it's getting there. You know, the leaves are starting to come out clean now, so it's getting there, um, coming on. Um, this just blooms well, this one. It always has for me. Uh, what else have we got? Um, I'm not going to remember the names, am I? Some of these are relatively new. Um, this one is... Oh, God, I can't see it. That's because the labels are back to front. This one is... Oh, it's, uh, the trouble is, quite a few of my Restrepias came from um, the uh, Jersey nursery, and so a lot of them do have French in their names. That's Havre des Passes. Cross with Gutulata. Gutulata I've actually got as a separate plant. But um, that bloom is large. For a Restrepia bloom, it's large. And without setting the tripod up, I can't do these justice because the camera will not pick up those tiny little markings. It, it just can't handle it unless the bloom is absolutely dead still and the camera is. It needs the tripod. And I haven't got time today. Sorry. Okay, this is another one that came from the same place. That's Hulise. I presume that's how it's said. <laughs> another one that came from the uh, Jersey Nursery. Another large bloom, as Restrepias go, large bloom. Um, been in continual bloom for some time now. Um, that's those three. My favourite at the moment is also my newest one. Um, and this is Handwar, H-A-N-D-O-I-S. Most of mine have come from this uh, Jersey nursery and it has a close association with France. So a lot of their names that they give their hybrids have got a French twang to them. 
That is a superb Restrepia. The colour balance is absolutely gorgeous. Um, young plant, but coming on. Yeah. So uh, that's the Restrepias that are in bloom at the moment. And this is a rare beast in my grow room. It is the only Cilogeny I've ever got to bloom. And it has started to grow much better. Um, and it has bloomed. Um, there's two plants. Um, they were pieces broken off of a failing large plant to try and rescue it. Well, it's rescued. It's put out some nice growth this year. And they've both bloomed. But these are lovely little blooms. You know, there aren't many blooms you get that have got a deep chocolate brown and yellow on them at the same time. They're delicate. They're very small. They are slightly fragrant. Um, but yeah, I've managed to rescue what was a large rambling plant that was going downhill fast. And um, I've got two potfuls. Um, this one has bloomed as well. That's had a couple of blooms. This one's currently got two. So they're rescued. And um, quite honestly, there aren't many orchids with a chocolate brown on them. You know, it's a sort of creamy colour. It's got yellow in it and a real chocolate brown with hairs on it. It, it warrants a close-up, but I haven't got time today. <laughs> but at least both of these plants have bloomed. They were in desperate need of rescuing when I took them on. They, they've grown reasonably well this year. I'm expecting much better things from those next year. They bloom in the autumn, one of the few Cilogenies that, well, out of the ones I've got that bloom in the autumn. And they've got autumn colours. Yay, I like that. Well, this is unusual. This is my only Phalaenopsis bloom out at the moment. So uh, that's all that's in bloom indoors. Um, it's, second, it's a secondary spike effectively. So um, I let that one go. I don't normally, I normally take spikes off and grow a new one, but uh, I let that one go. Um, lovely blooms. I do like my Phalaenopsis blooms. I'm not so keen on the plants as such. Oh, look at that. Massive mealy bug. <laughs> it's all right, it just caught my eye. You have to deal with bugs when you see them. Don't leave them till later. There'll only be more. <laughs> that was an adult as well. So uh, they're in much better conditions indoors, that's the problem. So they are likely to get out of hand in here, far more likely than they will out in the grow room because of the cold nights. They're not happy out there at the moment. I like that. But uh, yeah, that's my only thing in bloom indoors at the moment, apart from my Stratocarpa which just keeps going, keeps doing well. It's growing out a lot of new leaves at the moment. So uh, anyway, that's all that's in bloom indoors. Okay, as far as I can tell, that's everything in bloom, but I'm doing it in bits and bobs and I may have missed something. Well, if I have tough, I've got a lot to do today. I'm behind in my work in here and I don't like watering late in the day. So, uh, and I started late, my own fault, but, um, I can't remember whether I filmed this one or not, so I thought if I end on it, at least I've got it. It's my only nobly out in bloom, and um, it shouldn't be. But it is, so we have it while it's going. Um, spring dream of pollen, this is, if I didn't mention it earlier. And, um, yeah, that will do for everything in bloom. As I say, I don't think I've missed anything. If I have, I'll apologise, and it's tough, because I really need to get busy. Um, I'm running out of day and I'm, I'm nowhere near as far around watering as I want it to be. Which means stuff's going to have to wait till tomorrow now. I've got all my mounts to do today and that now has to be done. Stop the pots, get on with the mounts. The pots will manage longer than the mounts will. This is their, um, I think this is their third or fourth day. So I need to crack on and um, hope you've enjoyed the everything in bloom thing. It's a regular feature and um, I dread the day that there won't be anything. But with the number of orchids I've got, I find that highly unlikely. <laughs> it's just, I don't think it's going to happen, basically. It does get a bit thin on the ground at certain times of year, but uh, at other times of year, it's a really long video because there's so much in bloom. So it, it comes and it goes, but it's a regular feature that I enjoy doing. So uh, that's the end of this one, and um, I don't think I've missed anything, but if I have, I can slot it in, I suppose, as I go round. And uh, I'll see you next time. What the next video is going to be, at the moment, I haven't got a clue. <laughs>
Not a clue. I'll find something. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.